Dr. Akiva Gamaliel Belk, Dean of Jewish Studies at B'nai Noach Torah Institute, LLC. Welcome to a taste of Torah, Bereshit Lamud Bet. That means in Genesis chapter 2, begin at verse 1 and go through to verse 25. Our textbook is Gematria and Mysticism in Genesis. I invite you to purchase a copy online at bnti.us forward slash books dot html. We'd appreciate it and that might help some with our expenses. Dear ones, we have a question. The question is, what is the first observance of a Torah? What's the first observance in the Bible? Well, dear ones, when we come to Genesis chapter 2, verse 16, we read that God gave a command the very first time in HaTorah that God gives a command. Now, please keep in mind that what we're sharing here today is uh, very special from this standpoint. Most individuals that have an English Bible are not going to be aware of this. And many individuals that have a Hebrew Bible may not be aware of this. God gave seven commands to Adam and Chava, and he expected them to observe those commands. However, God gave one command primarily, originally, and that command was you can enjoy all the trees and the fruit of all the trees in the garden, except of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That tree, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, belongs to the Creator. You cannot enjoy it. You cannot take anything from it. You cannot pick its fruit, you cannot eat its fruit, it does not belong to you. So, what is the first command that they broke? Well, some would say they were disobedient. That's true, they were disobedient. But they took something that did not belong to them. So, the first violation was that of being a ganaf, a thief of stealing. So Hava stole from the fruit and she gave from that fruit to her husband and he took and he ate and they both enjoyed stolen fruit. So the first observance of Hot Torah was to not steal. And all through history we have had struggles with stealing, even stealing the smallest, tiniest, littlest, teensiest thing. Stealing of any kind is forbidden. So dear ones, when we go to the market and we want to try a few grapes, and we eat a few grapes, if we haven't paid for them, that's stealing. If we see a few nuts over in this bin and, and uh, it does not say help yourself, and we take a couple and we consume them without paying for them, that's stealing. So we must be very careful because in our world, the very first, very first observance was, this belongs to me, everything else I'm giving you permission to eat or to use or to have or to enjoy, but you cannot take from this tree. This does not belong to you. And so that's the first observance that Adam Harishon, the first man, and Chava Rishona, Eve, broke in Gan Eden. Now there's seven other, uh, there's, there's other mitzvot of HaTorah, and they're all located in Bereshi chapter 2, verse 16. We're not going to go over them in this discussion, but they are in the notes of the book that I just shared. And then we go into detail. I wrote this book a year or so ago. And we go into detail and we explain them. Now, one of our 
important points is, is when we do something wrong, when we fail, when we sin, we need repentance, we need forgiveness, we need to change our course of action. Now, God willing, in chapter 4, we're going to talk about repentance. However, today in our discussion, it's necessary to point out that Adam Harishon and uh, Harishonah failed. They sinned. But yet, we know that in uh, Genesis chapter 131, our Creator said that He had created everything, and it was the, uh, towards the very end of the sixth day, and they had already sinned, and He said, Everything that he made was very good. And so that included Adam, and that included Chava. Everything was very good. And so we have to ask ourselves, could sin be good? Well, we wouldn't think so. But repentance from sin would be very good. <laughs> and so we recognize that our sages teach um, in uh, Nadarim 39b that God created the Torah, repentance, Gan Eden, Gehenna, um, the uh, glorious throne, the temple, and the name for Messiah before he created this world. So we know that Adam HaRishon and HaRishon are both had repentance. They both uh, acknowledged their failure and their sin. They both made a plan to not repeat it. And they both were willing to pay restitution for what they did wrong. They had repentance and repentance is very good. Now we also know that when we're talking about observances that there was this one primary observance that our forefathers failed on. But the Creator gave us seven observances of which we discuss in our book. But there were actually 613 observances. Now most of the world is familiar with the Ten Observances, the Ten Commandments. Out of those Ten Commandments come all observances. And so, dear ones, there's observances for men, there's observances for women, for children, for parents, for the high priest, for priests, for farmers, for hunters, for landlords, for lenders. So when it comes down to it, out of 613 observances, we actually just don't have that many to... Uh, have to follow because they're spread out to so many different areas of life. We only follow those that pertain to us specifically. So, dear one, you might ask, well, Dr. Kiva Gonmo, how is it that you know about these observances? What tells you about these observances? Dear ones, in uh, the ethics of our fathers, we're told that the creator of the universe uh, made ten uh, utterances. And these ten utterances were the foundation words for the creation of everything, nothing excluded. So, even though the Creator had these ten utterances, none of them were a mitzvah. None of them were a command. They were God said, God said, God said, in the beginning God created. Those were the ten hundredses. But in Genesis chapter 2, verse 16, we find for the very first time the word Vayitzav, meaning, and he commanded. This isn't a request that can be optional, optional. This is a command. And this was given to to Adam and to Chava, and to all the people of the world. And so the Gematria is uh, 112. And we know that years later, that God would take all these mitzvot, and he would give them to Noach, and to Shem, and to Ever. And they formed the first school, the school of Shem and Ever, the yeshiva of Shem and Ever, the academy of Shem and Ever. And they taught the Torah observances, and Abraham went to their school, and Isaac went to their school, and Jacob went to their school. And so in the year 2448, when God delivered the people, the people, that is Ba'am, the people, the Gematria is 112, when God delivered the people of Israel from slavery in Mitzrayim, he took them to Har Sinai, to Mount Sinai, 
And there he gave them the 613 mitzvot of our Torah. So we see that when we as humans, those who are not Jewish and those who are Jewish, who have failed, there was in God's plan a people that God would say, I am going to give you the 613 mitzvot and you will inherit them and you must observe them. And that is the people of Israel. And we see this mystically in the word Yitzah, which is Gematria 112, the very first usage. And we see this in the very first usage in um, Exodus, uh, um, the first time that God calls the Jewish people, the people, the nation, 